All right, let's do something a little bit different today. We're going to be covering just one Windows API function. We're going to be covering the create process function kind of as a way for us to, I guess, just add a little bit more knowledge to our overall understanding of the Windows API, how to call functions, things like that. So it's not gonna be a full RRE episode or anything like that. We are going to be touching on code that I did write for RRE, actually the last episode, if you wanna go check it out. We embedded a Python executable within a Windows executable, which I think is really cool, but we're going to be covering a very, very small part of that code, which is just basically just calling and creating a, a process. So let's hop on over to the code and start going over it. Okay, so you've got the function here that I've got highlighted. The um, next function is, is fairly boring. All it does is actually just write a file out. Um, I think that's actually the function that we covered like pretty much all of last time. Um, but today we're going to be talking about this function right here and specifically this function call, create process right here. Um, so this function call is pretty much the meat of the entire video. So what we're doing right here is we are creating an empty startup info structure. I'm going to include some links to the actual documentation of these structures below. There's really not too much point of me actually covering the structures since most of those are just kind of copy paste from MSDN anyways. Um, so I'm not going to cover it that in depth. We're just going to kind of briefly mention them. So the startup info um, kind of structure is kind of just basically a structure where you would store information about how to start a process up within the correct context, configured the right way, all of that. Um, the process information structure is actually going to be written to by the create process call. So if you haven't written a lot of Windows API code, basically the way that it works is you create an empty structure that Windows will then fill out. I personally can't stand the way that they do it that way. I, I, I really do hate it. It's, it's silly and it creates lots of bugs later on down the line and I, I just genuinely don't like it. I would rather them be like return oriented to where I can basically just call the process and whatever is returned from that process fills in the um, kind of the process information um, structure or what have you. But that's, that's I guess, nerd argument, whatever. Um, we then zero out the memory blocks corresponding to the startup info and process info um, structures. So we don't want anything like any junk file, like junk information there. So we go ahead and zero that out. Um, and then we hop into the actual code itself. So to kind of explain what this is doing, essentially it's calling the create process function within an if block to basically, you know, kind of throw it, uh, basically what Windows does do is their API returns a like falsy result if the function fails. So this is going to say basically if create process fails in any way humanly possible, it's going to throw a, a basically a um, value that is going to correspond to false here and we're going to actually be able to print that out within a message box. Hopefully, I actually haven't hit any errors with this yet so I don't even know if the error checking works. Um, so it's going to call it right here. Let's look at this call. So the very first item is the most important item. That is the actual module name. Now what Windows does, which is kind of cool, I'll give them props where it's due, is basically it allows you to write lots of different types of values here. So it's going to give you the ability to just write the file name. It gives you the ability to write the relative path. So if this were instead within var slash embed underscore rip 4exe and you can do a full path um, var slash slash embed underscore rip 4.exe. These are all fine. What basically happens is Windows will assume if you don't give it a full path, then it's going to start within the working directory of the calling function or the calling process. So since this is kind of in testing, the calling process is always going to be kind of within my you know, distributed um, or, or my, my disk folder where everything is compiled to. And that's also where this executable is written by default. So all we really have to do is put, you know, basically the name of the executable here and nothing else matters. Windows just automatically checks there um, to begin with. Um, now, you'll notice that pretty much everything after this is false or, or not false, but uh, a null in most cases um, until we get down to these structures right here. So 
the context in which I'm using this, I don't need all of this stuff. I don't need command line arguments. I don't need to worry about inherited um, process handles or thread handles. Um, I don't need to worry about the, um, the inheritability of the environment block, things like that. So I wrote a blog about this, actually. I'll link um, to that in the description where you can kind of look over a little bit more information. I'm gonna kind of breeze over it a little bit for the sake of brevity. Um, but really what I can picture being the most powerful outside of my context or even within my context, which is malware development, is this command line right here. So basically what this is, would allow you to do is you could call these processes and pass in command line arguments all within the same function call, which would be really cool. Um, now here we've got the process and thread handles are not inheritable. Um, I don't really care about that. It defaults to false if you pass in a null value here, I believe. Um, so I don't need to worry about the like inheritability of the handles um, from the calling function or the calling process to the called process and the called threads. That doesn't matter to me. Same thing for the environment ha handle right here. That would be false as well. I don't really care about that. I'm not worried about the flags. Um, there's a whole long list of kind of creation flags that will tell the operating system exactly how to create this process. I don't care about any of that. Um, environment variables, don't care about that. Um, the starting directory, it's going to automatically start from this directory here or the, the kind of relative directory here. So I'm not worried about that either. And then we're passing a pointer to the startup info structure right here, which we could have actually like put information into, we didn't. Um, and then the pointer to the process information structure that is actually going to carry the information about the process. And really that's it. At the end of this, you should have a running process. The process information structure is going to have information corresponding to the handle to the process that you've created and the handle to the main thread of the process that you've created as well as the process identifier. So all of that is very like useful in information. If you cared about that, you would pass that in. Um, basically, you would return this process information pointer right here to where the rest of your code can use it. And that's really about it. I wanted to keep it as simple and short as humanly possible. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments of this video. Obviously, I'm always open to answer questions, about, especially about stuff that I wasn't clear about. But like I said, I did all, also write a blog on this that maybe goes into a little bit more detail about the argument specifically. Um, but this, this kind of gives you an idea about the bare minimum, very simple version of like calling this actual function itself. So I hope that did help out in that regard. Take it easy. Peace.